subcommittee. Um, I want to announce that this meeting is uh, being, it's a Zoom meeting and it's being recorded uh, by uh, the uh, Northampton Open Media. And uh, we'll start with a roll call. So Noah, would you take, take the roll? Yes. Uh, Nick? Yes, I'm here. David? Here. Nandi? <coughs> here. Cynthia? Here. And Elizabeth is not here yet. Okay. Um, the, um, Noah got the minutes out later this afternoon. I don't, I have not had a chance to look at them. Um, I, I don't know if anybody has had a chance to look at them. Uh, does, does anybody want to comment on the minutes uh, or uh, 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 propose appro approval, approval of the minutes? I um, gave um, Noah some changes. There were some wrong titles and names just because of you know, how okay. fast we talk and everything. So I'm not sure where that's at. Noah, if you resend those or if you corrected those. Or yeah, I corrected the, par the paragraph you sent me. So okay. all of the names and organizations are all right. So have, uh, Noah, have you sent the revised version or, or, did, or is the version I got the revised version? The version you have that I sent is not revised. Um, I changed one paragraph in the beginning of um, uh, when Cynthia was reporting back on domestic violence. It was like the first couple of sentences that included the names of the people that um, she contacted. Okay, then um, <clears throat> then it uh, I I would trust uh, Cynthia's review and. Uh, if if you if Cynthia you want to propose approval of the minutes, uh, we could uh, uh, as as revised by Noah um, could uh, we could maybe take care of that rather than leaving it for another meeting. I, I don't know if people want to do that because maybe you really should read them if you haven't. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just saying, um, but it's up to you. I can I can. Uh, you know, move to, to approve the revisions, but I don't want to speak on behalf of everyone else. Well, that, that's fair. Yeah, so you know, I've seen them and, and I'm not, I have no concerns with the minutes, um, just to say I, I, I wouldn't object um, to oh, okay. pen, pending um, Cynthia's proposed edits, but that, but David, uh, you're welcome to- I haven't, I haven't read them, but I trust your judgment on them. I'm happy to approve them and move on. Uh, and. Uh, if, if I, we could, I, I, don't, I don't know if this is uh, permissible, but we could approve them. And then if somebody has an issue, we could revise them, like, re-approve re them uh, later on. Uh, I don't know if that, I just, I just feel like it would help us it, move along. It would be nice not to get bogged down in, in administrative things. So yeah, so perhaps we could amend if somebody catches something to change. Yeah. That in future minutes. Yeah. Oh. So much to do, so little time. I know. I keep trying to get them out to you as soon as I can. I understand. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. I'm trying out here, but I understand. I get it. Everyone's so busy. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, can I have a proposal then to proposal to approve to approve the minutes from the last meeting pending Cynthia's edits. Uh, with the provision that we uh, are open to making amendments should we discover further mistakes. Second. Great. Thank you. M minutes approved. Thank you. Um, uh, and I think we have Elizabeth. Is that, do we have Elizabeth? We seem to. Hold on. Uh, Elizabeth, are you with us? Uh, yes, I'm here. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I don't I, uh, I don't know if um, people are comfortable with this, but I'd, I'd like to propose um, that for the process of the meeting that when people are speaking, if they are able to show their face, that it would just help with communication. Uh, and I, I, 
I want to run that by all of you to see if you're comfortable with that. Um, but it just, uh, this Zoom process is still a work in progress. And uh, I, um, I, I wonder how people feel about that. Nick, could you say more for your the rationale for the request? Because it strikes me that if people are not have their cameras off, they probably have it off for some reason, you know. And so it, it means overriding whatever reason a person might have it off. So do you, you want to make a case for why somebody should override? My my, I you know I guess if if somebody really doesn't want to do it, that's really okay. I I guess what I'm saying is, it I find it easier to communicate when I can see 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 a person's face. I just find, I, I'm a visual person. And uh, uh, if somebody strongly objects to that or, or do, is not comfortable with that, I, I, can, I can accept that. But I, I want, I guess I wanted to put out that I find it a little bit easier when I can actually um, see the person. I find it easier to listen and to understand what they're, they're saying. Um, if, uh, if that's not, uh, it, it's not something I feel adamant about. I, I, I just, um, don't want to go there. So, um, I, I certainly feel better seeing folks live and in person and with a cup of coffee, but, um, I just don't want to put any more restrictions. Okay. On. So let, how about if I just say, you know, if any, if people are comfortable, uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's something I, I, uh, uh, I appreciate. And if you're not comfortable, um, uh, we certainly can hear everybody. And I, I don't want to spend time on it uh, unless anybody else has a comment. One comment, Nick, and again, I, I, what you propose sounds quite reasonable, but the reason why I, I suggested, it sort of puts some people on the spot, you know, to kind of, again, I'm, I'm going to presume the good faith that when somebody is electing to have the camera off that they're doing so for a reason. I don't know that they should feel compelled to give us that reason. There could be numerous oh, reasons. No, no. The privacy reasons, there's all sorts right. of reasons. So, you know, to me, to me, I mean, you can, I think it's not wrong that you, you state that preference and I can say I as well love it when I can do face to face, but at times I choose to turn the camera off. I, I could say, I, I'll offer my reasons. I'm on Zoom all day and sometimes I want a break from it. Sometimes I'm listening and, you know, so, but you, you suggest when speaking, you'd like to see people's faces. And, you know, and, and I think putting that request out there is totally fine, but it's, I guess the issue, it's not only what is comfortable for you or for me or for any one of us individually, but the person who chooses to have it off has their own reason too. And I wouldn't want to press them to, um, I, I wouldn't want to put any social pressure on somebody to, to, to change what obviously seems to be a choice to not be on, right? I, I just feel like I want, to, I want to just be clear that it's not, it's not random or an accident that, that the camera's off, it's all for, some thoughtful reason. <clears throat> I'm presuming that maybe. Yeah, I I'll, I'll I'll jump in also because I, you know, obviously my camera is off and um, I'm going to choose to keep it off for the rest of the meeting. Um, you know, I, I you know understand why you're requesting that, but <clears throat> you know, for all the reasons that have been mentioned, whether it be privacy, um, you know, Zoom fatigue, um, just barriers to participating in this in this process, you know. Um, adding another one is, I don't think it's, you know, it's, it's actually, it actually is a bigger request than what you, than what you're asking, than what may immediately be apparent to you. Um, it, it is, uh, would be another barrier to participating in, in this, um, in this process. And so um, I would recommend that, you know, I'm personally not going to, I'm choosing to leave my camera off uh, during uh, this particular meeting. Um, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to put any pressure for anyone else to, um, you know, have the, their camera on or off uh, based on what their current circumstances, whether it be privacy or um, <laughs> fatigue or uh, you know any other issue. Uh, it could even also I've, I've been we've all been doing this for a very long time. Um, oftentimes um, the reason main reason my camera is off is you know my internet connection is it's a lot better for me to be able to connect. Um, without having the camera on and all the other things, you know, audio going at the same time, it freezes. So there's also those types of things to, to, uh, to consider. So um, again, in good faith, I'm just gonna say that if someone has their camera off, it's for a, re a good reason and we can, um, but your, your 
your request is noted. Elizabeth, I, 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 I totally appreciate that. I didn't mean to put you on the spot at all. I, I just, um, I, I, I really feel that you've all um, um, clarified the issue for me and, uh, and let's, let's just move on. I, I totally accept uh, the, the points that have been made. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, now, uh, can I raise one other point before we move on just very briefly, Nick? Um, <clears throat> this, um, this may seem to speak to the other side of the issue, but I, I'm also mindful that in several, several past meetings, it's been brought to our attention <clears throat> that we may not be devoting enough time to particularly the women who are members of our groups. And I've been thinking a lot about kind of why that happens. I know I've been guilty of, you know, taking up more airtime and I'm just trying to do what I can to not do that. And so in, in my deliberation about this, it occurred to me that on some occasions, um, it, if there, I, I guess it, when you have the camera on, it's easier to verbals or get a sense of when someone is trying to get in but can't get in. So I guess I would say if the camera's off, maybe who are, all of us who have cameras off, if I do it as well, uh, somehow take extra responsibility to signal if you would like to get into the conversation, if you feel that the men are taking up too much time or it, it, it strikes me that it's just it, the camera off can be a barrier to detecting when somebody is uncomfortably wanting the conversation. And so I guess I just wanna ask if it is off, whoever has it off has to kind of think about how to get there, make sure we chat or somehow let us know that, that they'd like to get a word in. So we make sure not to take up too much time. And again, myself included, if I turn my camera off. And, and Elizabeth, speaking as a woman on this commission, I, I want to put to you do, do you, do you have any thoughts about that? Have you felt excluded from conversations um, you know, for gender reasons or have any thoughts about how we can make sure not to exclude you uh, if we're not, if we're unable to detect nonverbals, anything we could do to make sure that we're more inclusive and and um, hear you. Uh, no, I, I appreciate that. I, I think um, with the uh, camera, I, I you know, I, I, there's the hand the hand raised function is one, but um, I'll ultimately, whenever I needed to feel like I needed to jump in, um, I just just kind of jump in, especially for this small meeting uh, because it's. It's um, just wait for a break in the conversation. So I, I appreciate that, but I, I haven't felt any um, any uh, additional, you know, need for anything else. So thanks. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, um, well, th uh, Elizabeth, th that's helpful to know because I, in the small, in this smaller meeting, I have not been uh, looking at the participant list and the hand raise function. Uh, so. Uh, if you're comfortable, just speak up and uh, I'll, I'll make sure, uh, or, or you could, um, I don't know if, I, well, just speak up in some way or get my attention in some way and we'll, we'll make sure uh, to, 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 to um, listen to you. Okay? <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. <clears throat> um, our next item was to welcome uh, the new member, except that he is not going to be on this committee, Chris Banks. He is uh, uh, on these, um, uh, what is it? This uh, outreach? Is it? Uh, uh, spending and oh, spending. budget. No, he's, on, he's on outreach. Oh, he's on outreach. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so um, he is not joining us. Okay, um, let me, I have to actually um, take a moment for myself to pull up the, um, the list of questions for the police. I actually forgot to put it onto my screen. So um, give me a moment, please, to... Uh, Nick, I, I happen to have it in case you want it. And Cynthia, do you have it? You may have it too. So it'll just take me a second to yeah, get take it. your time. And, take it. And I, Nick, I just wanted to ask you: Are you? Are you? I don't have the agenda in front of me. Are you going to bring up the timeline that we sent? I had that under new business, Cynthia. Um, but um, uh, so yes, unless you'd like to move it, uh, move it up. That's that. Uh, why, why don't we do that next? Um, uh, why don't we? Why don't we take, 
can, uh, if it's okay to put one piece of new business a little bit earlier on the agenda and talk about the timeline, Cynthia, you can discuss that while I'm, while I'm pulling up the other piece of information. Um, Nick, I forget because I've been looking at a lot of things. Noah, maybe you can help me do, does, has everyone seen the timeline? I did not go over, but I saw it came in my email, so I'm happy to look okay. at it. I distributed it to ev I distributed yeah. it to everybody on this committee. Okay, so so just very very briefly, we're going to discuss it in detail um, on February second. But um, just generally, what we're proposing is um, this is sort of like beginning with the end in mind, meaning the end being the date of March 18th when the report is due. And so you will see on the timeline uh, maybe three critical things that have changed, perhaps. Um, one is, is um, we want to restrict the media, or, um, try as hard as possible to put time limits on our meetings, full commission meetings, for two hours. And um, uh, piggybacking on that, we want to move the full commission to once a week, as opposed to every other week. And we've, uh, the timeline outlines uh, the various subcommittees taking a stab at where they're at. Some we know better than others. Um, and just um, having the subcommittees kind of focus now more on narrowing so that we can get to thinking about the structure of the final report. And um, so part of this is the, the con you know, having the consensus model of where we wanna end up um, it, it can be a, a broad goal, but a very definitive goal like abolition. And then how do we get to that going backwards? And so um, we just wanna try to have more investment in that conversation about um, what our consensus is and how to get there. And so um, this is just meant to be a document to react to. So that's, that's really all I have to say about it. I, I don't know if it's, Generally speaking, you think it's a good way to go, or um, it's, uh, it, it, and we also plugged in the public hearings. They, they may be in the wrong spot, but we just need to get a schedule established um, so that we can we know where we're moving forward to. Any thoughts from other members about the new timeline? First, I want to say thank you, Cynthia, for the leadership and the effort to keep us focused on how we get to a goal. I, I, it, this is, you know, it's a cliche to talk about herding cats, but whatever people mean when they talk about that, I feel like, you know, th this, is, this is like that on steroids, trying to get this group to focus on something and get to a goal. So it's, it's, it's challenging and difficult, and so I appreciate that. And I, I guess I would say, you know, coming out of the last meeting, uh, you know, I objected a little bit to the idea of more time um, and what I, get, what I, you know, I would say I was really objecting to more inefficient time or more unbounded time. I didn't want to give uh, the, the co-chairs a blank check of my time, which is for all of us enormously valuable. So I would say, you know, in, in addition to sort of highlighting that these two hour meetings once a week, you know, a, a much more thoughtful approach to how we use that time. So, you know, some, some case that we really can make that this will be a more efficient use of time, which means, I think, which means changing some of our practices, you know, doing things really differently than, we, than we've done before. And I certainly leave it to the leadership to kind of work out those details. But I do think laying out for us how we're going to, you know, set certain limits or what we're going to do within those two hours that will be driving towards um, the, the work we have got to accomplish by March uh, would make me a lot more uh, eager or willing to sign up for a, a greater time investment. Because I do realize that, you know, once a week, every other week is unrealistic under, under any, I, mean, I can't conceive of, a, of an efficient process, any process that would lead us there you know, one, uh, every other week. So anyway, so I just want to thank you for, for thinking about this and I you know, agree with the broad outlines and, and maybe, maybe if you could say a little more about what you think about how we would modify the, the use of the two hours, um, processes that we could put into place that would likely you know, make our process more efficient. You know, like why should we have confidence that we actually will stay to the two-hour limit? And why should we have confidence that if we do this every other week, we will get to the goal based on you know, the current thinking? Yeah, I mean, I, just to, to respond to that, I mean, I think um, Dan and I are committed to do, getting to the final goal and committed to getting a, um, 
a general consensus. And as I go to a lot of these committee meetings, uh, subcommittee meetings, I'm seeing that kind of happening, um, that there's a very, you know, general sense of a direction. And um, I think it's a good direction. I mean, it, told, it, it really leads toward abolition. And I think that there's a, um, a feeling that that isn't something that we as a commission can just say without providing some rationale, documentation, steps, and acknowledging that this is not an overnight thing. This is something that we're committed to as an end goal, but we also have that ugly work of trying to figure out how to do it yeah. that's possible within the current city structure. And going out on a limb many times, which I think we're going to have to do to kind of push the city council and, and the executive branch, whoever that might be, um, to look at this a bit differently, if not completely differently. So, um, I mean, to your point, Nandi, I mean, I'm, Dan is just a super guy to work with and, and he brings a set of skills that are just unbelievable. And we've had a long conversation about, can we cut people off? <laughs> you know, and we just might have to just put a time limit on and say, well, let's wrap up this discussion and move to the next item. Because we really see it now as subcommittees giving their reports and us coming to a consensus about what the bones of the uh, report's going to be, and then we'll put the meat on those bones. So I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. And it might be some committees dissolve and go in a different direction, you know, or, or they become something else. So we have to see. Thank you. Any other comments about the timeline? Yeah, I definitely wanted to um, just thank Cynthia and Dan for this. This is really fantastic work. And as you mentioned, just um, uh, <clears throat> as you mentioned, Nambi, I, I, I'm feeling confident about having a direction for the time spent, not just kind of adding more time, just to add more time. So uh, this is um, this was. A, a reflection of a great deal of work, which I'm just very appreciative of. So thank you for that. And it, and, and it um, just, it makes sense. So quick question and um, thank you, Cynthia. It really, and Dan, it's really um, nice to have the structure. Um, so quick question on this topic, does this change what we're doing or are there or how might this change what what we're what we want to do in this meeting um and um is there any immediate uh uh thoughts people have about our our own subcommittee Um, you know, my, my thoughts are that I continue to feel that we overlap so much with the alternatives um, subcommittee. And I, I don't know what to do to, um, to avoid that. Um, I do think that there are things that we have not yet talked about that we should talk about simply because they were in the directive that created the commission, such as body cameras. I don't think that's a long conversation. Um, you're either for them or against them. Uh, I don't personally think that, I, I, I'm personally in favor of them, although I don't view them as you know, the end all of reform for sure. Um, uh, things uh, that, in my mind, fall under policies and services, again, that we haven't talked about yet. Um, I think, I actually, I think I said all three of them last meeting, um, the, um, uh, the, the, the 911 uh, function, how, do, how does that have to change? How would that happen? But again, I mean, I, um, 
it, it, just so that everybody else knows, I, I sent a letter to Cynthia and Dan um, after the last meeting, and I actually right. suggested we disband the committees because I think they've out. They think that we, we've worn out their usefulness, and I thought we should create some different committees. But be that as it may, um, I, I, it just seems to me that there are these things we haven't uh, 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 touched on. And every time I start thinking about them, I think, well, but then somebody else is is doing that or should be doing that. Nine one one being an example, I don't know. Is is is? I, I think that the way we've, to the extent we, it's even come up, we've thought well, 911 operators would have to have much more training and be aware of much more things. I suppose the question arises, well, how does that get paid for? And maybe that's part of the budget and contract committee. But um, in any event, um, I just, I, I would like to, uh, I would like to, I would like to make sure that we cover all the bases. Um, you know, we, we covered those areas that each of us took a uh, um, each of us took on a particular area of the police function, but there are a lot that we haven't talked about. Um, there are easy ones and there are hard ones. Um, the easiest one of all is I don't understand why animal control is under the police department. You know. So it would be, seems to me it would be very easy to say we propose that that be an independent department or not controlled by the police. More difficult one, maybe the most difficult one, is what, what, what is the policy regarding um, street disturb, disturbances? I mean, it's kind of been highlighted by what happened in Washington uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. When is it appropriate for police to respond? When it is, appro is it appropriate for someone else to respond? I don't know what the current policy is on that, if there is one. Um, and again, I think as soon as we start talking about that, it's gonna overlap into the um, alternative subcommittee. So I, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit, so I'll try to conclude by saying, you know, we've covered some things. We've covered mental health. We've covered um, domestic violence. We, we've covered um, uh, traffic, although not nearly to the level of depth I think we need to. But I think we, we at least need to acknowledge the full range of things that police do. Um, which is what I tried to do in very early on in that list of things that I uh, created. So in terms of what our subcommittee should be doing, I think we have to figure out a way to at least figure out what the policies are and should be in regard to these other areas of policing. And I think we do need to go deeper into the areas we've already done our homework on. Well, David, thank you. I mean, I, I hear what you've said as an argument for continuing our subcommittee, not disbanding it. Mm -hmm. um, you've already outlined just you a, a series of agenda items. I mean, the only thing it sounds like sounds like a reason to disband is, is your, your statement that we might be overlapping with alternatives. But in your sentence where you say we need to know what the policies are and should be, to me, I, I can put a bright line between are and should be. So it strikes me that knowing what they are is what our subcommittee is about. I'm not sure that the alternatives are taking that up. So the question of what is the policy for street disturbance is it a perfect question to put to the chief of police. I'm not sure anyone else is asking that question. The question of why is Northampton police involved in animal control? Again, you know, we, the, the, the answer of why that's the case, if it's not on their website, I don't know how else we get the answer than, than to address it to the chief. Maybe there is some other way, I don't know. But to me, that, that's, that could be on our agenda. So I, I guess I would propose that we should probably flesh out what is the work that needs to be done and try and see kind of what's realistic, you know, just like Cynthia and Dan did to try to uh, talk about what's, how do we wind down the full commission? How do we wind down our subcommittee responsibly? Like what are the urgent things we, we must do and how can we efficiently, you know, how can we get to a place where we disband? I mean, I, I agree with you that event by March we have to be over with, 
but I think I think there's work that needs to be done. And, and most pressing is is I think we're the only ones who can have a conversation with the chief of police, which is to maintain an enormous uh, contribution to this to this effort if we can do that. Yeah, let, let me just uh, say, Andy, uh, I, I don't disagree with anything you said. Um, uh, the one area that um, we do have permission to overlap on is th this area of traffic enforcement, which I think Booker and uh, I think it's Booker and Javier that are the chairs kind of delegated that to me since I've done that. And while I'm talking about this, um, um, I have located with the assistance of uh, um, uh, one of the people that follows us on these meetings, um, uh, I have located a law professor who has written a 60 page article on how to get the police out of law enforcement. Uh, it's really quite impressive. Uh, and um, I, I'm in communication with him and I'd like to have him address either our subcommittee or the public hearing. Um, and this is a very well-educated um, guy, obviously, whose article is being published uh, by none other than the Stanford Law Review. It's not some left-wing outlet. Um, uh, so I'm not asking, I'm just, you know, letting folks know about that. I don't know if that's something we want to take up as to whether or not that should be done. Maybe Cynthia, you have thoughts on that as to whether, my initial reaction was to invite him to, to, uh, get, to make sure that he would have a time slot during one of the public hearings. Um, but I suppose we could have him address our subcommittee, whatever people think is the best. So I he's I, willing to do it. I think he's willing to do it, but I, um, I just to kind of keep our meeting um, to, to our meeting structure. Do can we, David? Could we address um, bringing in a speaker under new business? Yeah, sure. And and um, because traffic is is. I, I, you've done a lot of work on it. It's an area uh, that has, it's almost a whole separate area by itself. And uh, um, let's put it under new business and um, uh, let's stick with other, let me just back, get back to the question of how the timeline issue changes what we're doing. And, and that is, there are, I have the, the, the commission um, mandate in front of me. And there are a number of things that you pointed out, David, um, uh, some of which we've addressed, the complaint policy, uh, 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 other things, body cameras, union contracts, training and equipment, data collection. Um, we're not going to be able to have a full discussion of all of these issues um, in the time frame that we have. Any suggestions how we can try to um, cover the, these main points, um, and and does it would it involve um, delegating um, kind of individual work? Because we know we we actually I think you know did a, a piece of that with the areas that we chose. But let me just ask if, if people have thoughts about how to go with this. Go and ahead. Just, and just a couple things. I mean, first of all, I can tell you that budget, budget and contracts are taking the union contract. So. Oh, great! Excellent. Can, that's good, that's good to know. We can take that off our plate. But on a more broader, um, um, more broader comment, I, I do think it's important for us to think about what the end is. And that drives our thinking. Um, I think in, uh, in this committee, uh, subcommittee, we've been spending a lot of time on this is wrong, so this is what should happen. Trying to fix something that we already know is wrong. And so um, I, I, just, I would just caution us to, to be careful of that because um, 
But that comes from, do you, do you feel like you want to abolish the police department or do you feel like you want to tweak it and reform it? You know, that's just really sort of the basic question here and backing up from that. Um, and so I just would caution us to not get too much in the weeds. Domestic violence, it was clear to me that um, uh, alternatives had it in a degree that was very different than the way we were taking it or the way I, I'm sorry, I researched it. That's it, this is what's happening. But I wasn't gonna solve domestic violence, but they're taking it in a very different direction. And I gave all my information to, to them. And so I think we're, we're sort of out of that one as well. And, and, and traffic, we, I think we believe the police should not be involved. What more do we need? I'm just wondering what more do we need to do on that particular issue other than to say someone else can do this? You know, because I sort of looked at this committee as, okay, let's see what's being done and not fix it, but let's just see what the practice is now and let's get some clarification on it. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, I have a, even our, I mean, I'm still happy to have the chief here and I think alternatives, maybe it's outreach, I'm, they're merging all, wants to have the chief as well. And we're, and we're even talking about coming in on our meeting but then it was decided they would have a separate meeting with the chief. So, you know, there's more at, at, um, energy around having the chief come in. But to me, it's like animal control, by the way, Namdi, there's a history behind that. It's a real interesting one. But I mean, I think it's a fine question to say, so, you know, how come we have animal control? But, but we don't need to justify it. We don't need, I mean, it just sort of stands on its own as being something kind of like, really, why does it belong there? So I don't know, I, I think we can take a step back and, and just and, and relook at all the areas that we're looking at. Um, and the other thing I would encourage you to do is, and um, you know, I'm, I'm sure David, your person is fantastic, but we also have a lot of documentation that has been sent to us about why um, the police shouldn't be involved in, in a lot of these um, law enforcement activities. So, um, I, I don't know, I just think, um, to me, we're in a place of beginning to wrap up. Um, and Nick, to your, to your issue, you know, we know there's a lot of mental health issues in Northampton. Can we solve that? I'm not walking away from it, but can we as the subcommittee make recommendations beyond peer, beyond having a special department in the city that's going to handle some of these things, um, which a lot of the groups are kind of talking about now. So those are my thoughts. Um, well, well, can I just follow quickly on what Cynthia just said? You know, I, I, I agree with or um, appreciate your thoughts. Now, one part of what you said was that you think we're ready to wrap up. And I, I my impression of this is that if, if this were a trial, we would be ready to have, you know, uh, one side wrap up. Like, I feel like, like the, you know, the prosecution could rest. But, but I feel like we have not even begun to hear from the defense. And, and, and to me, it, it, it's quite a, a, a shocking sort of uh, a idea to be engaged in a process that's aimed at reforming justice without actually hearing substantively from the defendant, so to speak. It, 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 to me, that's an inherently unjust process. I've sort of made that point a few times. So I think we haven't begun to actually um, hear in, in, in a thoughtful way kind of um, how, the, how the police department, how the specifically the Northampton Police Department you know, would defend um, themselves uh, with regard to the kinds of things that we're thinking about. So I just want to put that out there. That's, that's yeah. my, and I'm not, I'm not thinking that we're halfway through, but I'm thinking yeah. there's no way that we can justifiably rest, especially our subcommittee, which is particularly charged with getting a, an accurate picture of what's happening in the Northampton Police Department. That's our, that, that's, well, that's what I feel I took on by, by joining this group. So I, I'll just keep carrying that banner. But that's my point. Yep. I think I think that I I, under, um, I appreciate that Namdi that in terms of kind of hearing hearing the other side, but I, I I'm challenged by this um, by the sense of you know being a prosecution and defense or that they're defending some sort of position um, because I think hearing from hearing from them you know hearing from the chief hearing the getting the uh, responses to the questions it's an information gathering and information gathering is very different than than, than presenting a case. And I think, you know, David, you, you're the expert on this, but, you know, presenting a case, you know, is different than just kind of gathering information, which is where 
uh, ultimately, we are gathering information. We're not trying a case to, to reach an end. We're, we're, we're gathering information to be able to thoughtfully paint a, a picture of what might be some next steps you know, and what our recommendations are for next steps too. Um, and, and we're in a, you know, listening mode, I, you know, but I don't think it's a, oh, now this is, um, this is their defense of their actions because ultimately I, I don't, I don't think that there's a, um, we've discussed this before. There's not a malice. There's, they're, they're not necessarily doing anything wrong in relation to, uh, you know, what they've been charged to do. So it's not about, you know, have they, what have they done or not done that's not, you know, up to par. It's more like, do we want it? As Cynthia was saying, what we don't think they say should be doing it. So it's, it's not about them defending whether or not they are good at it. It's just, we just don't think they should be. And I think it's, I think it's appropriate though, to hear, you know, just to hear and listen and gather information, but to, to, to offer to even the chief or anyone who may come here from the police department to say, you know, we're giving you an opportunity to defend yourself as if the outcome um, is somehow uh, uh, going to tip based on their responses, um, I think might also be unfair to them. Because I feel like we are able to wrap up in some ways, you know, we've not just because of our own personal, you know, analysis of the of, of our of our charge, but because of the overwhelming public response that we've been getting, not just through these meetings, through the public meetings, but through email and everything else. The overwhelming public response is the public does not want police involvement. They want the reduction of the, of the footprint. They want, uh, you know, deep, deep, bold reforms. Um, and ultimately that's, that's the charge of governance is to respond to the governed. And so there's no analysis or defense that the chief can or anyone else can say you know we're good at this that's okay you know but but ultimately we need to respond to the overwhelming uh public response and that is that is i think though we're not elected officials i think that that's um you know we're, we're also not experts in any of these issues you know um and so i think that that's you know, holding what the public is saying, um, in addition to our deep, thoughtful analysis that we've been doing, um, letting the, and letting anyone come here and say that they're going to have a defense that's going to somehow tip tip something in a different direction, I think is not quite fair to them either. Yeah, you know, I I, I agree with uh, a lot of the points that both Namdi and Elizabeth make, although. You know, I, I do feel the need to say one thing about, you know, your use of the term, the overwhelming support for um, abolition or, or, or whatever. It, it, it's overwhelming in terms of the people who have voiced their opinion at these meetings. When you go out to the broader community, you're going to find that it's not overwhelming at all, that 80% of the public is going to think you want to abolish the police. You're nuts. You're a bunch of left-wing kooks. And my greatest fear here, and this goes to what you were saying, Cynthia, about, you know, just you, again, using the traffic example, you know, you, you, you suggested, well, we just say, look, we don't think traffic need to be involved. Now, I'm not sure if you were saying that that's all our subcommittee should do and we should leave the rest to the alternatives committee. But one thing, my greatest fear in all the work we're putting into this, and I articulated this about six weeks ago at a general meeting, is that we're gonna end up with something that reads like a sociology paper. Uh, 50 years ago, uh, right now, I was taking a class called Radical Perspectives in Sociology. I think about it all the time during these meetings. Reminds me a lot of the discussion we had 50 years ago. And uh, I do not want to be finished this work with a report that the, the city council and the mayor and most of the public look at and say, left-wing activist kooks, let's move on. I think we need to have very specific plans as to why this isn't left-wing crazy talk. 
that why we really don't need the police involved in traffic. Um, we really don't need uh, the police to respond to domestic violence. We sure as hell don't need them in the schools. And I think we have to tell the public in a, in a very non-confrontational way. I like the way you said, Elizabeth, she's not the defendant, but that this can work. And it, it, and it works because it makes sense. It's good for everyone. Um, so I, I, again, I don't wanna keep rambling on, but my frustration in terms of where we're at, both as a larger committee and the subcommittee is, I think we need to be getting down to specifics um, with, uh, and again, I'll use traffic because that's what I'm most familiar with. All right, well, when, when you say police out of traffic, what does that mean? Somebody's weaving in and out down Main Street on a busy summer afternoon. What do we do? Just let them go? Um, what happens if you walk some, watch somebody take a big slug out of a bottle of whiskey and drive down the street? We don't do anything about it? How does that get enforced? We have to tell how those things are going to be handled. Um, so, and the same is true with, with mental health. It's great to say, get the police out of mental health calls, but we should be, we've heard, you know, the, the peer response model, the professional plus, we have to, I think, take a careful look at that and make a recommendation as to uh, what the models are and which one we recommend they adopt and how it gets adopted. I, 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 and I mean, I don't know that we have to go into super detail in terms of saying like, okay, so you would get $10,000 from the budget from here and from here, uh, you'd get another $15,000. And we, you know, I don't think we need to get to that granular level of, of, a, of a solution. But I think we have to have some real substance to the recommendations that come out of and again, I, I mean, if you take the very limited view of this committee with just this is what there is, I suppose it falls to the alternatives committee, which is, um, you know, I, but it, 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 it's got to come out in the final report or, or we're just going to get, we're, we're just going to be marginalized as the usual left-wing activists. David? Yes. Can I, can I respond? Yes. Before you, before you respond, do you see Elizabeth's hands up? Just so you know, Nick, did you notice? Oh, that? sorry, I did not. Thank you. I just want to let you know. I don't know what, why I did not. Oh, I see it now. Okay, <laughs> good. I, I did not see that uh, icon on my screen. I got it now. Thank you. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Uh, yeah. No, I think um, I, I'm all for going, getting down to specifics. Uh, however, I, I'm I'm, I'm, I have to say, David, I'm, I'm actually really, um, it's interesting that to say that there's 80% of, of people out there believe that this is, you know, they, they were, it's crazy to get rid of police. Um, but I also think that, you know, I've been, this isn't the only commission I've been, I've been watching and listening to at Northampton, um, kind of have these different commissions um, you know, for, for a variety of different topics. And one of the things that's always so um, so startling to me is for a community that is prides itself for being so liberal <laughs> and and that sort of thing. You know, it's the people they choose to listen to um, is is really startling because there's often these commissions, whether it be parks or something else, where people there will be the same type of people who come to those commissions. Um, they are, you know, they. There, maybe there's only a few of them, but those voices are the ones that are listened to without question. They're listened to, they're logged. They're like, yes, well, we had this person come in and, you know, that, sure, there are, you know, 90 and if there's the same person who's been coming here and, you know, and they're speaking of very specific viewpoints. So we're going to go ahead and pass these, uh, you know, codes or these other things, that, whatever it is, um, because three people came and said that this is what they wanted. And so where that is, is, is happening over and over again in the city, um, you have hundreds of people come in to speak to their, uh, their viewpoint around, the, this, around this process and around what they'd like to see. Um, but we're, 
so often during this, this entire commission, whether it's a large one or even in this small committee, we dismiss dismiss these voices. And because of, uh, you know, oh, we ha they're not the right voices or we haven't heard from this voice or that voice. Uh, this is the most amount of public participation I've seen on many of these commissions. And somehow the, the voices are still continuing to be dismissed. And somehow there's this larger group of people out there that we're not hearing from that are the true voices of, of the, what this, what this um, uh, city actually wants. So I just think we need to check that because it's, it actually, I don't think it's, I don't think that that, um, I don't think it's true. I think we are hearing the voices of the community in a, in a more robust and representative way than, than most uh, uh, city processes uh, happen you know, in this community. I'm going to speak since I don't think anybody else has got their hand up. Um, David, if, if you, you've pointed out that the, the over, our overlap with the alternatives committee, if you knew that there was going to be an alternate entity likely to evolve from this commission, let me clarify, because we don't know what that entity would be. The word alternate could mean a, an additional entity, uh, or it could be a substitute entity. I, that has not been clarified. But if you knew there was going to be an entity, could, could some of your questions be forwarded to be developed over time by that entity. And, and uh, sorry about that, just a second. Um, the, um, uh, what I'm saying is, I don't think we're gonna be able to give the specific details of everything that we want to happen because so much of it has to evolve. And I, what I'm wondering is, would it help if we knew that some somebody was going to continue the, the this work and that we want to aim it, we want to drive it in the right direction, and we want to say traffic needs to be addressed, um, the specifics of it still need to be worked out. There are models for it, um, things like that. Would that help with our process, David, if we were able to agree that there was some way this work would be continued rather than, because that, that would help me. That, that would help me. Because I feel like some things need to change in our police department and some things need to be done not by our police department. Well, I, I think simultaneously. I, I think one of the things that we need to reach a consensus on as a full commission is a statement that, as Cynthia has already suggested, I mean, we're, we're not going to we're not going to abolish the police department on March eighteenth. Um, yes, we are. Uh, um, that that the city uh, really needs to commit beyond this commission, there needs to be uh, either a, another commission to implement this, which is gonna go on for a lo much longer time there, or, or there needs to be a, a committee of the city council that is going to um, implement this. But the rest of your question, Nick, I think it's a question of degree. And what I've been trying to suggest is there's a difference between saying the commission reaches a conclusion that the, that the city does not to be to be involved, the police department is not to be involved in traffic enforcement at one extreme and at the other extreme, you know, getting down to the minute details uh, of it. I do think we need to say, look, you've probably never thought about a world where the police are not patrolling and pulling you over for speeding and stuff like that, but here's how it works. 
here's how it would work. Uh, we would create a, a Department of Transportation. We would have a uh, civil authorities uh, without badges, without guns, who would enforce minor traffic violations. And, you know, a, a, a series of how this works without getting into granular detail. I think that's similar to what I'm saying, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Let me, let me back up David's point, because I, I, I agree with it, that I, I would like our product to be taken seriously. And, and I do think it's important to show that we're that we that we we're not just being aspirational on what we propose, but that we, we've thought the next step. So I will use the example of my area that I was told to focus on, which is the school resource officer. I feel obligated not, not only to suggest that we keep police out of the schools, but that I need to say a little something about, and what happens when there's a shooter at Northampton High School. Like, I think there's a little obligation to kind of say, we, we recognize that the concern that said something that, that I, you know, this, this fictitious 80%, maybe it's 60%, maybe it's 40%. There'll be a, a group of parents in this community who feel more safe to have a police officer standing um, at, at that school. And we, I, I think we're obligated to say something to those parents. In addition to the, our mandate to also have the parents who are concerned about the presence of the police officer. I mean, the removal is to address the parents of color who find the police officer not a help, but a minus. And I think we also then need to say, and we recognize that an essential concern is school shooting. And here are some, I mean, again, if not alternatives, at least recognition that, that there's a way that this can be addressed without, without having a police officer in the school. So I think, but I think there's that need to kind of marry our aspirations to a sense of realistic understanding that, that traffic can be monitored you know, without police. But some sense that these things, are, we're not just sort of, you know, being sort of crazy leftists, that, we're, that, we, that we are really thoughtful about how these things practically can be, uh, that, that the needs of the community can be met uh, with these reforms we're proposing. Again, I'm not, I, oh, go ahead, Cynthia, go ahead. Yeah, I, I don't think we're gonna go blindly. Yeah, I mean, I, I sort of, when, when you were given the example now, I was thinking like, there, there needs to be an active shooter protocol in the city, you know? And so uh, under this new rubric, or let's call it the department, because a lot of people are talking about this because it is this tangible thing that some folks are saying can be under the executive branch. There are other folks that are saying it doesn't really have to be under the executive branch. But anyway, I'll leave that for our discussions down the line. But. Um, um, I think we have to like think through those things, you know, because there is going to be public reaction, definitely. Um, but I think, I mean, I'm sort of envisioning the report as there's going to be some sociological background making the case um, sections. Um, and a lot of it, the outreach committee is doing some very interesting work about actually going to people and sort of documenting those cases. So they're laying the groundwork. Um, but I don't think that'll be the full report. I think there will be the nuts and the, the you know, sort of the more granular things that we've been referring to. Um, but some of these issues like traffic versus animal control are gonna have these different levels of granular <laughs> responses and the way we research them. And so we just have to acknowledge that as well. But, um, um, but I think it's a, um, yeah, I mean, to Alyssa's point, we have heard from so many people and I know there's people out there that are gonna be like, you are crazy, you know, I, I get that. But, and so we'll have to have some kind of responses for that, but I don't want that to drive our process. And I, I do think it comes to where do we all stand with this? You know, where do we want the end goal? And it will take beyond March 18th. It will take years. But if we don't establish that structure and say, police commission, police review commission's goal is to abolish the police department it, and um, you figure out how long it's going to take, or we can say by 2024, you, you know, and hear how we're going to back it up. I mean, we still have to have all those discussions. Um, so I think I'm, I agree with you, David. I don't want, I, I guess I could be, you know, I'm not ashamed of being accused of being a liberal progressive wacko or whatever, <laughs> but um, I, I think the report definitely has got to be. Um, succinct and tangible and make the case. Here we go back to your language. 
<laughs> the defense and prosecutor. Um, and and I just go back to having the, the chief of police in. I really would be elated to hear what she has to say. I don't think it's going to change things because it's really a different culture, right? That she's operating under with all her good intentions. Um, but um, it's just a different culture. So I, I didn't want to back away from having her in. I think we probably at some point need to get to the questions. Our questions are so overwhelming. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> and we want to kind but, of um, sort of summarize that for her. And she may say, I don't want to go. I don't know. I mean, we don't even know if she wants yeah, to she go. Might, she, might, she might pull out. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't mean to tie this up, Nick. I what, just, what did you just say? I missed that. She might pull out. What What were you referring to? She uh, may decide not to come. I don't know. I mean. Yeah, and we, and we shouldn't speculate. But you know, as I say, as you know, the interim report was not was not met with a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. And, and and I've got reason to believe. Yeah, that there's a lot of concern. But but let's not let's not presume that. Let's okay. Get, All right. Because I, I think if again, her choosing not to participate would in itself would be information. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that, you know, like, yeah. It's all relevant, you know. So. Mm -hmm. So I think we should proceed, and I th again, I think it will reflect well on us to show a good faith effort to hear what the what they have to say. I mean, I I just think it's only fair, it's only just that we would have you know whether you think about it as a defense or not. I I think why I think the defense language is a little bit defensible is because I think we'd recognize that she'd be coming in with a perspective. Uh, you know, if we were just interested in data and finding out facts, that's kind of what we did when we made the information requests. We're looking for her filter, her explanation for what the data says or means or what, you know, these questions. And we should know that whatever is coming to us is filtered. And it's up to us to decide what we want to believe, what we find useful. You know, that's our job. But let her at least give us her perspective. And then that gets incorporated in what we finally decide. You know, I, I I'm looking forward to I, I'm looking forward to cross examining the chief, frankly. <laughs> uh, and um, you know, I do do have we made the decision to give her the questions in advance because yeah. Just, I thought we did. David, let's get to that in a second. We're going to get I'm going to get to the, how we're going to deal with the police the police chief right now. But Elizabeth has I think Elizabeth has her hand raised. Oh, sorry. Let's see it. I don't think so. I don't oh, think so either. I see a hand. I'm sorry. Oh, it. No, you know, I'm good. <laughs> it's my. It's Noah. It's, it's Noah. My, your hand has a hand on it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on Elizabeth. Sorry, Elizabeth. I'm sorry, David. Uh, I want to. I want to get to the questions, so we can just move right into it, David. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, I don't want to, I've been talking a lot here. So I, I you know, I, I just was going to say, I mean, I don't have any objection of telling her, look, these are the areas we want you to be able to address, but I don't want to be limited to questions that are previous. I, I mean, I, I have a lot of questions for the chief. I just picked out five that were kind of in the area that I, had agreed to be responsible for, but I could examine the chief for uh, six hours. I have plenty of things I'd like to ask her about. And I, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't want to feel like we're constrained to fixed questions that she has a prepared answer for. I don't think that's all that helpful. Um, I do think in fairness, we should tell her, look, these are the general areas that we would like to talk about. Um, and, and I totally agree with what Elizabeth said before. She's not the defendant. Uh, I mean, you know, I, 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 I like the chief. She's a very nice person. And, 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 uh, and I think at some point we need to acknowledge that. Um, but she is a cop and she's not going to be happy with, I think, a lot of the things that, the changes that we propose. Um, so anyway, that's my two cents on the questioning, whatever. So, so David, my, my compromise there is that we, I think we, we're gonna need to talk about the questions. We'll need to narrow them down, have a smaller list. But I, I think we should say to her that here are some <laughs> questions or topics and there may be and will be follow-ups, right? So, that, so we don't tie our hands, we can't ask follow-ups. But my, rec my recommendation for, the, for giving her ahead of time is some things, she won't just know in her head. I'm not just looking for her opinions and her knee-jerk reactions. I'm looking for her to kind of 
go do a little bit of homework and then come back with thoughtful, prepared, kind of the best, the best available answer to this question that she can do. And then we would be free to follow up with other things. That, that's what I would suggest. And, but again, it has to be fewer questions than what we have. So uh, we have to discuss how to do it. But um, so that, that's my, David, would you, would, does that fit your? Yeah, it? absolutely. I, that, that makes a lot of sense. Now. I, think we, I, I think we, you know, maybe tell her, look, here are some questions that may require a little preparation on your part. There will certainly be others and there may be follow-up. Um, yeah. But I, I think that's a, a, that's a good suggestion. Cynthia and Elizabeth, could you weigh in? Um, I'm for shorter questions. I'm for not, um, you know, we have to put time limits. I'm really for time limits. Um, um, and I think we need to, I mean, um, David said he could cross-examine her for hours. I think we need to share that wealth <laughs> as much as we can, or what, what, what are some of the questions you'd like to ask for David? And maybe we could share that. Um, uh, so, yeah, and I, I wanna be respectful. I mean, she's a human, she's a human being, you know? I just, I don't want this to be a trial. I, I just, I like what, I'm not sure who said this, but I, I thought our committee was a information gathering committee. Elizabeth said that, yes. Yeah. And, and yes, thank you, uh, Nick and Elizabeth. So that's what I'm, I'm just really curious. And you know that this, none of this, anything we recommend is not gonna be a surprise. It, it is, she has discussed this with her colleagues and peers throughout the nation. So um, it's just getting it specific to Northampton. So um, I just don't know how we're gonna summarize these four pages, but you did in, in nice categories, Nick. So maybe a great question. Job category. Elizabeth, do you have some thoughts? Yeah, I like the idea of just getting, I, I don't know that we need to take out anything from the list and I apologize, I did send my questions um, about a, 20 minutes ago to, to you all, so you're in your email. Um, but um, I don't know that we need to shorten it. I think we just send it as is and say these are all the topics that we're looking to address. We may cover you know, any any one of these, um, just again for the preparation aspect, but um, but certainly we won't have time to go through all of them. Um, and yeah, so I, I I don't I think I think we just send it as is because I think it's um it anything we can't actually cover in person when she's in, talking with us, we can um. Uh, maybe accept in written replies or something like that. Well, that would be, be interesting. Um, that would be interesting to get that or write a response. So maybe we could rotate, like on the day she comes, we would each of us take a turn, like you ask a question, you ask a question, something like that. And we would sort of each have to prioritize our question. So the one you care about the most, you ask first, or do you think we would need to ask them in the or, in the sequence that Nick Nate laid out? I'm, I'm totally open to discussing either way, but. Can, can I ask, I, I put the I put the questions together by topic, not by person. Yeah. And I'm wondering if people would be comfortable if somebody could join me in reviewing the list of questions to reduce duplication and to get the questions as focused as possible. Um, would would with I'll do that, Nick. I, I, I'm happy to do that. I, I haven't looked at the full list okay. um, yet. I've looked at some individuals that were submitted. I can't even remember which ones. So, um, okay. So we could go over the list together, narrow it down, because some of the questions just ask the same question in a different way and, yeah. and kind of get to what it is we really, the, the way we really want to ask it. And I think we're all in agreement that we're not we're not bound to the questions. We the right. questions are a framework to elicit information. And then if we want more information, we'll ask her when she's there. So the the next question is how do you want to um you were Nanda, you were starting to address the format of um we put out a question, 
she answers it and then we all take turns with follow-up if we have further questions on that issue. Um, trying to monitor the time, we'll have to also decide how long we want to take. What, what, what are your thoughts? I'm sorry. You, did you want to respond to that, Nancy? Dave, why, why you want to have it? Because well, I, I, I was, you're going to be I editing. Was say, I think the way to do it is, is to do it the way the uh, congressional hearings are are, are done. Um, we have an hour, uh, say, or whatever she agrees to give us. Uh, there are five of us on the committee. Uh, okay, if we have an hour, okay, uh, you get 12 minutes to question uh, the chief. When my 12 minutes are up, uh, Namdi takes his 12 and, you know, until all of us have, have, have questioned her. I think that's the way to do it. And again, I'm, you know, uh, examining witnesses is something I, I, I know a little about. And you, um, you know, you, 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 you don't write your questions out in, in advance. Um, it's just not the way you, you get information. Um, one question produces an answer, which produces another question. It's you know the the, the Socratic method, and and, and you don't. It, it's just it, it's just not conducive to getting information to list your questions out and follow them in a rote uh, fashion. And, and and I think I mean you know we've all watched enough of these congressional hearings over the years. I mean I think it's effect. It's it's essentially it's a system that works and is tested. Can can I take issue with that, just uh, a, a different perspective? The, con the congressional hearings are often an opportunity for our legislat legislators to grandstand. And often the questions they ask are an expression of opinions and they're, they're not so interested in the answers. And I just, I don't, I, I just don't know that that's the exact model that that's not the model that I want. I really feel the questions are to elicit information. I do agree that we should all have a certain amount of time to get the information that we're looking for. Um, but I, I, I want it to be, um, I, I don't have a problem. I thought you actually said, David, it's okay to give her the basic question areas before yeah. before we get get it started. So I'm comfortable with that, and then um, and then we take turns asking the specific the specific question areas. And I I um, I'm not even sure we need to do that beforehand, but we it might help to do it beforehand to see who's going to lead the the questions um, for each particular topic. There's going to be an editing down process. It sounds like that David's going to take charge of, and so in that process, David, it would be helpful if somehow you figure out, like, if you're combining two people's questions, somehow you keep track of, like, this is a combination of Cynthia and Nick or something like that, because that might. So I guess we have to decide: do we do we want to ask the question that we authored or co-authored or something like that? Do we agree that if you are in a 12-minute time frame, which which sounds good to me, as long as you're not you know grandstanding, we sort of know what people are asking. But do we say that if you're in your 12 minutes, then only the person who's questioning would get to follow up in that 12 minutes. And then as we pass the baton, you know, if you want to, you can ask a follow up from the last section if you want, but, you, but then you're using up your 12 minutes. I sort of like that because I like Cynthia's note comment that we should be mindful of time. And so, so having a kind of 12 minute straight jacket that you have to decide and stay in your box and then pass it on to the next person. Um, I, I, I like that as long as we're not grand, grandstanding and as long as we're trying our best to move through the questions in a reasonable order. I'm open to other people's ideas of how we order it, whether it's your questions or whether it's these topics. But anyway, so I, I favor that. I just wanted to say, I think it's a reasonable framework. Um, so, but I guess what key question is, do we feel like it's, do people feel like it's important that you get to ask a follow-up in someone else's 12 minute block? I mean, I'm saying no, but unless someone thinks that that should happen. I could, I could. Yeah. I think it's good to preserve the block. Yeah. I, mean, I don't yeah. think there's going to be anything outrageous that we're going to want to just sprint into. So. Yeah, you can always like follow up on something later if you yeah. know, your time, right? Yeah. yeah. And that way, we, where everyone gets this equal time, and and we get through. You know, we won't get to everything, but but and then, and it forces forces everybody to prioritize. So we do need to kind of figure out how we're going to prioritize. You know, 
I don't know if that's up to each of us individually. Maybe, David, once you finish the edits, maybe we then could all look at our questions and try to figure out which one we want to ask first, second, third. Or Nick, do you want to make a case that it's really important that we ask her the commission mandate and police questions first, and then we ask her the, you know, current policing next? So can you say something about how you ordered these and, and the sequence? Is there some is there some order to the topics that you think is important for us to preserve? Um, I did purposely put the commission mandate questions first because I I wanted I I, I thought that was a good starting point. Um, I also. I'm not sure I'm understanding your proposal. And I just want to clarify it. Um, I was thinking that our interest in these topics, w w multiple people are interested in each of these topics. I, I was thinking that there might be 12 minutes per question and that we, Take, you know, we have an opportunity for different people to ask what it is they're interested in rather than one person for each topic. But I, am I understanding you correctly, Nandi, yeah. that you were talking well, about I, one person for each topic? No, I, I was thinking, I was thinking that we would try something like, I mean, it really is 12 minutes per person and you get through as many questions as you can get through. Oh, you, jump around, jump around, ask different questions from different yeah, topics. Yes, unless you feel like it's so important that we preserve I, this, right? So, so you would ask the question, I think the best question to ask is the ones you wrote essentially. And, and then, you know, in the, in the order that matters most to you, and then, you know, with follow-ups if they occur to you. Um, but I think if you do it that way, it might violate these. So, so I think there should be a step that David condenses these in, into redundant questions. And then we sort of take ownership of what do we want to ask? And every person has to figure out the order because you got 12 minutes and there's a good chance that you know, you, you, you're not gonna get to the end of your list. So the most important thing you wanna ask is the first thing you should ask. I mean, I think, we, I think we can agree. You should ask what matters most to you rather than having a question that someone else wrote, I think is probably better. Um, but we should try to make them not redundant. So we have to get them so that you're not re-asking what someone else asked. I understand. So you're saying, Nandi, let's go back to each person's individual questions, reduce the duplication, but let each person ask their list of questions, even if they overlap topics. I guess as long as they don't overlap what someone else has already asked, because it's precious time, we don't want to waste. Well, well that, yeah. that's an individual responsibility. Yeah. Does anyone disagree with that? Because I, I just, I think, I think you know, you'll, you'll be the best deliverer of your question than someone else trying to ask your question. I get it. I think what's going to work best is just you know, that we, we be as free to follow your nose and follow the, your, 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 the answer to your last question as possible. You don't wanna start off with preconceived constraints on where you can go with the next question. That, that's just not an effective way to, to, to gather information. information. Um, you kind of have to just follow, follow where it goes. So then the next question is the order of, uh, of who asks the questions because certain things will be covered earlier by, by who asks. So do we just want to have an arbitrary uh, order of, of we'll take turns and each gets our 12 minutes? Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I don't think it matters that much. Okay. How about David? How about if you if if you and I just talk briefly about the list of questions, go over it together, uh, and uh, try to reduce the duplication, and uh, come up with an order of uh, uh, who's going who uh, what order will be asking the questions. Okay. So that's how, what do other people think of that? It sounds good. I'm kind of looking at the schedule in terms of uh, um, if next week we finalize it and we could maybe come up with a, a date to invite the chief because it might be we're, we're dipping into February now, you know, so I just want us to keep yeah. moving and also to think yeah. in terms of our next meeting. We're not going to yeah. have those Tuesdays for us anymore every other Tuesday. 
Okay, so, why don't we um, why don't we choose the date for first of all? We need to have a new time for this meeting. Is right. that correct? And I I meant to put down a, a tentative date to see the to meet with the chief on the schedule, but I see I neglected to do that. But I'm looking at something like the week of February 13th. Okay, and are people um, do people have a preferred day you would like to shift this meeting to? Um, any any day from Monday to Thursday. Wednesday is is, is better. Um, also, um, I have to check with Dan and maybe Cynthia. You know this actually um, about whether Nick and David are allowed to work together outside of a meeting, in terms of open meeting law and the quorum and the stuff. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure they can, but um, there gets to be a point where what they discussed then goes to another one other person, and then that's the quorum. So, but if what they discussed goes to all of us in a public meeting, then we're okay. okay. But uh, does that make sense, Noah? I mean, but I I run it by Dan just in case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in open right, meeting that. law makes sense to me. I'm so like, me. yeah, sure. Like um, we're a, we're a but you are reviewing a document as opposed to a document that we're going to be using as opposed to having a chat about how Cynthia is taking up too much time, you know, in the committee. So uh -huh. it, it's two different things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Michael said that's right. It so. might be that Nick and, and David oh, okay. come into our next meeting, you know, with a proposed like plan for who asked what question when, because we may not have yeah. to discuss that, right? That might have, you guys might just, we need to trust you to just kind of come up with the, here's the order, because that might be the meeting where the, where the chief is. We might basically just like have to hit the ground running. And uh -huh. you're, which, might, which might be okay. That's okay with me. So back to the day that the, um, Elizabeth, Elizabeth's uh, best day is Wednesday, David's Monday through Thursday. Uh, okay. If Wednesday is the best day for Elizabeth, is that a good day for everybody else? I can do Wednesday. Yeah. I can do Wednesday too. Sure. Check. I have to check. Hold on. <laughs> Wednesday the. Um, Same time slot, right? Seven, seven to whatever. Seven. So whatever. Seven to eight thirty. Although it's very hard for us to stick to that. I'm happy. We're not going to make it tonight. Yeah. Um, We're not. Wednesday, the, February the 3rd, spending in contracts 5 to 7, alternative 7.30 to 9. You can have it. Yeah, I don't mind overlapping with other people's meetings, but maybe, I mean, to me, that's like a constraint on us. Um, yes. Attend the other ones. We'll have to admin, probably. Oh, can I see. I, we have to, we need you, right? Okay. Can I add? Can <laughs> I, I you need Noah. Yeah. Elizabeth, is, is Monday difficult for you? Be, if the other two committees are both meeting on Wednesday. Oh, we can no, Monday, Monday, Monday's fine too. If Monday's fine, it seems to me it's better if we can meet on a day that the other two committees are not meeting. Is there, is there, any, um, is there any way if we were gonna do Monday to do it a, a little bit earlier uh, than seven? Yes. Okay yes. Yes. Do you want to do you want to meet at six thirty or six? Either one would be great. How about six thirty to eight? Good with me. Mm -hmm. okay, here. Good with me. Okay, it's six thirty to eight on Mondays, and the question is. Are we still going to meet every other week, or do we need to meet uh, around the, the police chief? Do we need to meet uh, consecutively for a couple more weeks, and even well, to, to meet consecutively for a couple of weeks? I think let's plug it in. No, let's just put it on the calendar. What? I'm sorry, Cynthia. Okay. I think I if we. If we want to continue planning to meet every week, let's just put in the calendar. And if we feel we don't need to, we can just cancel it. 
so I, I returned to my same comment earlier about not not being interested in giving a blank check to so I want to understand that the, I mean so I'm not opposed to what Cynthia just said yes put it in the calendar but um, until I have the justification for why we would be meeting every week I, I would be I, my default is we're not meeting every other every week and, until there's a reason to um, so let's just see about the, the the police chief's availability and how much more time we think it'll take us to uh, get through the items that David laid out um, but I have no objection to holding holding the Monday slot which is what's yeah. the so if we can meet next Monday, it will allow us to defer the complaint discussion to next Monday. And it will also allow us to finalize how we're going to be interviewing the police chief and, um, and, and what else? And we can also look at what other issues we want our subcommittee to address. Those are all things we touched upon tonight. Sounds like a justification <laughs> to me. <laughs> Elizabeth, are you with us on this? Uh, sounds good. Okay, so then we could actually um, come close to um, ending tonight's meeting with a plan on meeting next Monday night. Let me just double check that I don't have anything in the way, one second. And so you wanna meet 6.30 to 8 Monday. You want me to hold Mondays from 6.30 to 8 in case we need them. So then Nick, I'll just need two agendas from you. Um, in the next couple of days. <laughs> So I can post. What, what, you need two agendas from me? Or I need I need the agenda for next Monday. Yes. Oh, that's right. And I need a blanket agenda that I can add to hold the slots. Let's take a page I, I, from, President, from President Trump. The commission will be making many calls and talking to many people because we're very important. Let's make the commission our commission a running agenda. <laughs> What's his agenda for the, the whole part of it? So, so, so no, I, I can I can revise that agenda as we get closer to the meeting. Is that the way it works? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes, so that you know we're not scrambling. Okay. And <laughs> um and do do you want so I'll give you one agenda, you'll just book it in the same agenda for for all the meetings. Okay. Okay, great. Um okay, I think we're good. David, you and I will have a phone conversation uh, sure. tomorrow or the next day. Um, yes. Okay. And uh, so that's um, and uh, I I need to just um, I I need to bring up tonight the fact. Um, under new business, I want to I, let, let's get to new business so that we can um, uh, make sure we've addressed everything. Uh, do we want to talk about a, a, a speaker for uh, traffic uh, tonight, or do we want to put that on the agenda? You know, I I, I had I had frankly uh, until this meeting, I hadn't really thought about it much. I have not spoken with this guy yet. We've exchanged emails. Uh, and I, I was going to ask if he would be interested in speaking at the public hearing, uh, much in the way uh, Rachel, whatever her name was, did. Um, but you know, I mean, I, I don't know. If people don't want to hear from him. It's fine with me. I he, he just he, he's he's a professor at the University of Arkansas School of Law, where believe it or not. They have a lesbian LGBTQ policy um, program. Yes, at the University of Arkansas. I could. I thought I was reading. It was a misprint. Um, but he is the head of that, and has um, gotten interested in this issue of traffic enforcement. And um, somebody sent me the article, and um, it's really quite impressive. Uh, Maybe we could view the article. Um, I'm happy to send it uh, to you. Uh, it's lengthy. It's sixty pages. You know, it's law. It's a law review article. So, if you've ever read law review, there's a a lot of the bulk of it is footnotes, citations to 
cases, studies, things like that. Um, so it's, it's not an easy read, so to speak. Um, but well, I, I can send that to Noah. Please send it. Yeah, sure. Happy to do that. I, I will do that tomorrow. And I'll put it on, I'll put it on our agenda. Um, other, um, I, I wanted to, um, I wanted to just bring up the fact that we uh, lost another member of the commission and I wanted to just ask if anybody had any anything you wanted to say about Lois's resignation. I, I just, and I think Dan and I were going to address this at the meeting, um, but I'll just throw out, you know, it, it's, um, it's not just Lois's resignations, we had two others. And so I would just, just note the majority of the people who are speaking on the commission are men. There's no way we can get around that. I just would want people to note that this is the kind of commission that we have now. That's all I can say. What's important to say, and it's important that we remain aware of it, and there may be more to say about it, and if anybody wants to put it on the, you know, bring it up, um, we can do that. Um, it, it, I do believe, go ahead, Namdi. I uh, just was going to say, I, I sort of said this in, in the full commission meeting, and I guess I want to say it again, is I, I think we could think creatively about how to make, to include the voices of people who have left us uh, in our, in our process in some way. And I, I don't know you know, what, whether this would run afoul of any kind of, you know, the open meeting laws or anything like that, but I'm imagining something as simple as inviting, you know, past commissioners to maybe write commentary on the final report or like to give them some sort of role because they had, you know, it shouldn't be equivalent co-authoring the report, but somehow having their voice recognized with some, some effort to, to sort of say, if you couldn't continue because you, the time commitment, you couldn't be in the meetings personally, but you put all this time in um, and you, and, and expertise, not just the time, people were selected based on expertise. So I think we've lost more than just bodies. We, we've lost, you know, particular members of the community who have a particular sort of voice. And so I guess I, I want us to think creatively, is there some way that we can continue to have those, that voice represented in the final report and give them some kind of role, some, some position? So I just want to put that out there again, especially since we have a co-chair here. Uh, can we think creatively about that? Cynthia, it sounds like this will be on the agenda for the next meeting, full commission meeting. Yeah, I mean, as I, did we release it yet, Noah? Do you know? I, I know we- The we timeline? Oh, no, the agenda. Oh, no, We're gonna, I haven't got okay. that yet. Yeah, it's, it's still, there's a couple of little tweaks to it. So yeah, I think it'll still be on. So it can be addressed too. Yeah. I, I think there will be more than a little discussion about it. I, I'm suspecting that it's, it's very, um, it's a very significant um, loss. Um, so agenda for next meeting. Um, and uh, other new business, I'm sorry, uh, any other new business? Then let's, let's clarify the agenda for the next meeting. Um, we're going to finalize uh, the invitation, the, the procedure and invitation for the police, for the police chief. We'll review the uh, David's uh, idea for bringing in the speaker for um, tra traffic enforcement. Um, we have the complaint procedure. 
Uh, I've, I've listed all the complaints for three years. I will try to make a chart that just briefly summarizes it. Thank you. Um, what, what else do we want? We, and, and then we, we had those other topics that we are trying to figure out how to get to or whether to get to. Sort of next steps for our yeah, maybe committee. we can yeah can try to see if we can go so far as to put them decide if we're going to address them and then when we're going to address them given yeah. that they have like a month and a half left you know so creating a priority and scheduling basically the the focus on those items. Would you like me to just put down a list of all the topics that have been so that we just have the same list in front of us all the yeah, time. And and then we can discuss kind of how we're going to prioritize them and where to schedule them. Um, I'm going to put the, that list of topics right into the agenda. Yeah, I think that sounds good. <clears throat> okay, any, any other items? Uh, move move to adjourn. Will, we will reconvene next Monday night at 6.30. And uh, I'll see you all then. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank you for running a good meeting, Nick. Appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye -bye. Thank you.